Hey, go ahead and crank it. That's not good. Up an easy hood. Let's diagnose a Chrysler and find out what happened to it. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. I know, I am super glad to be here. This is a 2011 Chrysler Town & Country miniature van. I believe it's got the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. A uh, customer states that they were driving down the uh, highway and it would not, uh, the thing started slowing down and losing power. It would not travel past 50 miles per hour. It continued to slow down, then it just shut off and it would not restart. Uh, it came in on a tow truck not long ago. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't get this thing to fire back up. Yeah, it looks like it just happened today too. Look at there. Still a little, still a little warm on the uh, temperature gauge. Okay, so add 152,367 miles on the odometer. Uh, anything could have happened here. So let's see if this thing's going to restart for us. Uh, let's turn off the electrical loads. Beginning engine restarting sequence now. Hey, it came alive. Okay, it runs. All right, well, let's get it into the shop real quick since it restarted. And uh, we'll see if we can't figure out what's wrong with it. Got a bunch of warning lights on here in the dash. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, she's not running well at all. Check engine light on, ABS lights on, squiggly car line is on, and whoa, 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 this thing's like bucking and trying to drive away from us here. It's not a happy camper at all. Okay, so it's sort of smoothed out. Tell you what, we don't know what's going on with it, so I'm gonna shut her back down. Is it still running? Yeah. We're gonna shut her back down. Let's pop the hood and go straight to the source and see what's wrong with this uh, piece of Stellantis product. Okay, let's take a look down below here. I believe we've got the, yep, 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. Let's see what her problem is. If we don't visually identify anything, we're gonna grab the scan tool and uh, we'll take a look inside the ECM and see if uh, it gives us any clues to what does, uh, has occurred here. Uh, I can tell you one thing, something's kind of stinky. Smells a little weird. All right, a little bit of illumination on the subject here. Uh, let's start with the Achilles heel on all the Pentastars, and that is the oil cooler assembly down there. Uh, I see a little bit of oil in there hanging out, but nothing really crazy. Let's see here, nothing obvious staring at me in the face. Got a new thermostat housing. I think we put that in a couple months ago. Hmm. Does that have coolant in it? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, coolant's kinda low. Let's see how low it really is. There, there is no coolant in it. Ooh, and I smell something stinky right there. Yeah, it smells, it smells right there, all right. It's got oil in it, this is good. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's fire it back up and back this thing out some. I'm gonna fill the uh, engine cooling system with some water and we'll see if we have a coolant leak. Maybe the thing overheated. Yeah, cause it started earlier. They said it didn't run. Up, oh, I see something right there. Look, there's some coolant or some kind of fluid. See right there, middle of the screen. Maybe we have a leaker that overheated. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and back it out. Fill it up full of coolant and then uh, see if that's uh that's our issue here beginning engine restarting sequence now Ooh, it doesn't sound good it does not sound very good at all i don't like it it's misfiring really bad service tire pressure monitoring system yeah we know service everything it all needs service multiple services okay back it out to the hose yeah, look at here, temperature's coming up. It's only been running a couple seconds. That's weird, yeah? Okay. Now, I wish to take care to not spill, just like I just did, because if we have a leaker, I want to see where it's coming from. 
is going to misfire. Hold it on up. Oh yeah, it's misfire. Look at that. We got some steam coming out of somewhere. It's getting worse as I put coolant in it. Or water, rather. Here, I know. There, a little bit of funnel action. You can fill it up a lot faster, yeah? That misfire is not going away though. See it? Doing the shaky shake. Not looking good, folks. Purging air bubbles. Yeah, this thing's behaving rather violently, I must say. Okay, that should be good now. Take a look down and oh yeah 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 yeah. Ah, that's not okay. Yeah, she's she's flying apart in there. Look at all that. Someone's dumping out everywhere. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go ahead and shut her down. That's enough. It's just pumping that water out as soon as I can pump it in. What blew up back here? Something, something failed. Is it a heater core hose? Yepper, there she is. It's got a blown up heater core line. Looks like uh, that one right there, that Y split right there. Now, the, the trouble is, guys, is uh, this misfire. I, uh, I don't like that. That tells me that um, we got really, 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 really overheated and our engine might have let go. We could have a... Uh, a leaking or blown up cylinder head or a cracked cylinder head uh, looks like there's a uh, combustion gases getting into the cooling system that that stink that I smelled and filling that hose back up we got all kinds of fluid running out of this thing over here look at that Yep, see it uh, right out in the back. It blew a hole out of the back of that fitting. Dang, that's uh, that's pretty gnarly. See, I, I think this thing uh, might actually be dead. It looks like it uh, started leaking out the coolant right there. It ran dry on coolant, then it overheated until she shut down. I believe that's uh, what may have occurred here. Let's get the scan tool out and take a look at any data or codes that we have in here and uh, see if we have any uh, more evidence on the event or not. Okay, climbing on back into the cabin here. Scan tool powering on. Meep. And where's my plug? There she is. Plug that guy in. Grab the keys that I dropped. Let's go ahead and key it on. Okay, scanner coming in. What do we have here, a Chrysler product? Sure. Chrysler, loading data. Ding! What year are you? 2000, what did I say, 2011? Sure. Automatic ID, it'll tell me if I'm right or not. And survey says, yep, 2011, town and country, 36, 152,367 miles on the odometer, that's correct. Display fitted systems list. There's pollen on my screen. Very polleny right now. We're gonna go to engine and codes menu. Let's see what's in here. Do, 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 do. Whoa, 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 hold on. Engine oil pressure sensor circuit. Engine coolant temp sensor circuit low. 
oil pressure, temperature, circuit low. So these are all attempts. Engine oil pressure, control stuck off, manual shift overheat, and cylinder four misfire. Okay. This is not looking good, folks. This is not looking good at all. Let's um let's take a look at cylinder number four and uh we're gonna pull the spark plug out and see if it has become steam cleaned. If there's coolant inside of cylinder four, then that she's done and this engine uh, has seen its last days. All right, let's hop on in. We're gonna nose this thing back into the shop here and I'm gonna pull this uh, intake manifold apart in order to get, uh, oh, start. Give some gas. It doesn't wanna start. More throttle. Yeah, no. She's a. Uh, she's not restarting. Almost. There it goes. There we go. It's alive. Okay. That was a rough one. Okay, let's nose it in real quick. Uh, I'm gonna pop the intake manifold off, and we are going to pull out the number four spark plug and take a look down inside. We're looking for coolant. Or, or we're looking for a steam cleaned piston. If coolant got in while driving, it was gonna burn off, it's gonna create a bunch of steam, and that's gonna super clean that piston. So that's gonna give us a, an indicator as to whether or not we in fact do have coolant uh, intrusion inside of uh, the cylinder. And I believe we do. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, we kind of drove this thing until it quit and it was so far overheated that it let the head gasket go or the head warped or cracked or something like that. So let's pull this uh, business apart right here and try to confirm such things. Okay, so front of the vehicle is right here. Now this is a V6 engine. So we've got cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. Number four is the one that set the misfire code. So what we're gonna do is pull this uh, intake plumbing off in here got to take the hose off of the intake on its little bracket right there there's two brackets that secure the intake to the cylinder head so it can't like move around and break off uh, several little bolts right here at the base of the intake uh, we have to get out we have to get all that stuff disconnected we'll lift the intake up kind of scooch it back and then we can dig out that coil and spark plug and then take a look down inside of that cylinder uh, with a boroscope camera to see if there's any carnage on uh, on cylinder number four or not but we will determine that once we get there. So let's start pulling things apart. We've got the uh, air filter lid here disconnected. We pull this PCV hose off. Get this guy out of the way. Other connections down here on the side. And we need an 8 mil for that hose clamp right there. Okay, 8 mil. Oh, well that was ineffective because it just slid off the throttle body. Okay, didn't have to take that loose after all. Oh man, how come it can't be like cylinder two or three? Look, they're right here. Check that out. Right there in front of us, staring at us in the face. Gotta do this the hard way. That's fine though. That is of no matter. It is what it is. You need not worry about it. So we're gonna pull this coolant hose off. Pull the dipstick out too. That way I don't break it off when I take the coolant hose and move it over to this side of the dipstick. Now what that's gonna do is expose to us a 10 millimeter nut right here and a 10 mil nut right there. We need to pull those nuts off and then we can get the eight mil bolts out from the, uh, uh, the base of the intake. Okay, 10 mil ratcheting wrench. I'm gonna reach in here and pull these nuts right off. Get those guys out. They're hard to see because they kind of point down and they can be a major hurdle if you don't know that they're there. Get this one out of here. Come on, nut. There we go. Okay, so now I believe we're free to get all the 8 mil fasteners disconnected and then we can pull this intake up and then slide it out of the way. Once again with the Ocho, come right on in. that I did not see. Yeah, there's one. One more.
Yeah, I think that's all of them. Let's give it a wiggle and find out. Uh, no. Where's that other one at? Oh, I see it. It's another one of those uh, bracket nuts right over there. I don't know how I forgot about that, but I did. It's because the brain is full of information. And sometimes you gotta cast information out in order to make room for new information. It's like RAM overload. Too much going on in the head. Or not enough going on in the head. It could be either or. There you go. So I need to take this bracket loose because these studs stick out here and I can't get this thing to come apart um, with those studs in position. And you can't remove the studs because they have like a, uh, like a washer on them, like a shoulder. And that shoulder will not pass through the hole that's in the bracket. It's very unfortunate. But they kind of captured this. And they captured the intake in position using that method. I don't know why, but they did. Regardless, it's just a couple of extra steps to take. No major deal. There's a 13 mil on a bigger stud on the bottom of that bracket. So, I need to break that guy loose. And that's gonna free up that bracket, I think, unless there's one more that I'm missing. Nope, bracket's free. Just go ahead and slide this guy right on out of here. Or not, because it still has wires in it, so I won't. So, since we're uh, taking the shortcut and not taking that off all the way, I think. Yeah, there we go. Now we're into it. Okay, so there's our coil in question. Let's go ahead and pull that coil out of there and take the, uh, take the spark plug out. And take a peek down inside of the hole. Put a towel over the intake runners. It might be a moot point, but due diligence details and whatnot and all that cool stuff and we have one 10 millimeter fastener securing the coil pull that guy out there's our coil and we fetch a spark plug socket and we'll pull that plug out and then go down in the hole with a bore scope okay spark plug socket on a wobble bit of an extension here let's break it loose Get it out. And the survey says we're not looking good. There's moisture on the spark plug. I can see it right here. Right there, there's a little bit. Okay, I've got the boroscope ready. And we are sending that down into the spark plug hole here. The runner down into the bottom. Let's get past the, uh, the threads on the for the spark plug. Kind of hard to do. Oh, there we go. Come on, get in there. There we go. Okay, we're going in, going in, going in, going in, and I can't can't see anything. Yeah, I see the reflection from the camera. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. I can't really see what's going on inside of that cylinder. I see liquid inside of that cylinder. Look, look right there. See the see that little line right there? That's liquid. There's liquid in there. That's definitely coolant, and there is liquid, I believe on on the end of my camera as well all right this isn't good yeah there's coolant down inside of that cylinder she's a uh, i think that's it she's done for this engine is over with here trying again i've gone and uh and pulled the camera out and cleaned off the lens and i think we have a better view on what we're trying to look for here we can see if you look at this uh, at the screen here the uh the top half of the piston where we're getting the most reflection from 
that uh, that's from the light on the camera. But uh, if we look a little closer, you see that line right there? That is the engine coolant as it's pooling up inside of this cylinder. So going in a little deeper here. Yeah, you can see the valve reliefs on the top of that piston. And then, yeah, there's a there's a couple ounces of coolant inside of there. Look, real close up view, we can see right there where it's touching the top of the piston. Yeah, that's definitely coolant. Here, let me dip my dipping stick into it some. And let's we'll see if we can't pull out some of that liquid just to confirm outside of the cylinder that there is in fact liquid there. And how hot yep right there there's a bunch of it right there okay yep that's a confirmed kill guys it's well literally it's a confirmed kill this thing suicided itself to death so what i'm thinking here is we ended up losing this uh uh what you call it this little heater bypass device thing over here and it dumped out all the engine coolant oh yeah there's a hole big old gaping hole in the back of it over there now that hole is on the uh the back side of this little fitting here but i'm thinking if we go in with a mirror we'll be able to see oh yeah you see that right there hang on let me get you out of the light zoom it in yep see the hole right there in the piece of plastic that guy blew out that's a big old hole right there thing blew out dumped out all the engine coolant and that was the cause of death uh, of this particular engine. Now, I don't see why we make a critical component out of plastic when I think uh, like aluminum should have been better, would have prevented that. But uh, hindsight's always 20, 20, and there's nothing we can do about it at this point. Okie dokes. Well, at this point, I have nothing uh, more to do on this car except for uh, back it out. I am not going to uh, put that spark plug back in and attempt to run this engine anymore with uh with the spark plugs because i do not want to generate compression on um on that cylinder because i fear that it could potentially hydrolock the engine and uh what that would do is actually bend the connecting rod so uh what i'm going to do is just kind of slap this back together so hopefully we can start it again and at least back it outside and uh right, we'll, we'll see if we're going to fix this thing i'm not sure if we want to pull the heads off and have them checked out or just pull the engine out and put a used one in and then go with that there's a couple options of potential repair on this but uh i've got to build up the estimates and bounce that stuff off the customer let's go ahead and tighten this thing down a little bit so yeah at this point guys she's uh she's dead in the water there's nothing more that I can uh, do for this particular engine at this time. Click. Put this one on there. And I do not believe that there is anything more for me to offer you uh, on this particular video. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, like I said, I've just gotta throw this intake back on and uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw this thing out in the parking lot and uh, I'm gonna build my estimates, see what my guy wants to do. And then we will go from there. So as always, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this situation in the uh, comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. Consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already. That way you will not miss out on any future content such as this. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, before I go, I'd like to wish each and every single one of you a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a doge, or Chrysler, or Fiat, or Stellantis, or whoever owns these things, in a blown up Pentastar 3.6, in a video, in a transmission. Okay, was it gonna start, or is it not gonna start? I don't think it's gonna start now. One cylinder removed. Well, that started. Let's try it again. Give it some gas. Well, it's running. Let's back her on out. Yeah, check engine lights flashing. It must have a misfire. Goodbye for now, Chrysler. We'll revisit you later.